I have had a healthy obsession in trying to find a way to remove water from oil in a Harvest Right freeze dryer. Harvest Right built a wonderful machine to freeze dry. The only downside to the freeze dryer is that water and oil doesn't mix and that water gets into the oil of the vacuum pump and the water coming from the freeze dryer is usually on the pH side of things acidic which is not healthy for the parts within the vacuum pump so I'm about ready to share with you what I've learned over the last two years the first thing I did I contacted a couple manufacturing companies that make vacuum filters for vacuum systems now this right here this piece is a vacuum filter that's used industry-wide and it comes with it a 10 micron filter now when it comes to 10 microns this will filter out liquid water but when it comes to water vapor it passes through the material of this filter so this didn't prevent the moisture from entering the vacuum pump but it did do a really wonderful job in filtering out the particulates you know the pieces of food that left the freeze dryer on the way to the vacuum pump so although my oil still had water in it it was really clean the next thing I tried was getting cotton balls and stuffing this filter full of cotton balls to see if the cotton balls would help absorb any of the moisture that was carried from the vac from the freeze dryer to the vacuum pump the cotton balls didn't work so I tried desiccant so I took desiccant and filled desiccant up inside of here and I weighed the uh, the filter chamber and I think it came out to actually I have it right here so the filter chain the filter weighed 206 grams and I started using that and after about 10 loads I weighed the chamber again and it weighed 206 grams so the desiccant wasn't working so I took one of the filters and I wrapped it with tape from top to bottom and in the bottom I drilled a bunch of holes I was thinking that was what was happening is that the the moisture was going to take the path of least resistance and would instead of going through my desiccant and cotton balls would just come out through the top so I wrapped tape around it to force the flow to go through the cotton balls to go through the desiccant and to come out into the bottom here that didn't work so I tried a different type of desiccant and that didn't work so I went nuclear and I made Big Bertha so Big Big Bertha is basically 2 inch scheduled 80 PVC pipe with an opening at the front and at the back that I could put in my fittings and that was filled with desiccant made for the vacuum industry that would force the moisture to go all the way through this canister and I was thinking boy going through all that material some of the moisture had to be trapped it didn't work either but in doing all this I did notice something did change with my vacuum pump I still got moisture that eventually turned into water and settled into my pump but I got less water in my vacuum pump than not having any filter at all and so that got me thinking 
about the movement of moisture from the freeze dryer to the vacuum pump. What I was actually doing is I wasn't trapping the moisture with my filters, with my desiccant, with my cotton balls, but what I was doing, I was slowing down the flow of the moisture to the vacuum pump and allowing the freeze dryer to freeze more of the moisture on the wall of the chamber. Because I was slowing down the CFMs, which is cubic feet per minute, I was slowing down that flow, less water was going to my vacuum pump. So I came up with this little doodad. So I made this critter. What this has, it has a number 12 male JIC on this side and a number 12 female JIC on this side. And in between here is an eighth inch nipple. Now all this is either made out of stainless steel or good quality still so it wouldn't rust and if you can kind of take a look through here you can see how small the orifice is that is going through this device and what I was hoping that this device would slow the CFMs so slow going from the chamber to the vacuum pump that it would leave more moisture in the chamber to freeze to the chamber wall so what I did, I did five loads with this device in line. So this right here would go to, this side went to the pump, this side went to the hose, and I ran five loads of food through my freeze dryer. To do this little experiment, each tray is going to take a thousand grams of water, which is a little bit over four cups. I'm just going to show you how much that is because trying to take this down the hallway to my freezer is going to be near impossible without spilling it. But this comes up about two thirds to three quarters up the side of the tray. And then this will go into the freeze dryer. And so what we're trying to see as this water sublimates and goes and freezes onto the chamber wall some of the vapor is going to be drawn out by the vacuum pump and so we want to see if putting a reduction valve in the hose will slow down the amount of water that ends up in our oil. So anyway, we're going to take these and put them in the freezer. We're going to pull the trays out just a little bit, fill them while they're in the freezer and then once they're rock hard we're going to put these into the freeze dryer. To start with I have four trays and each tray have 1,000 grams of water which is about what a normal food tray would probably hold if there was food in here. So we're going to go ahead and put these in the freezer and see how much of this moisture can make it past the chamber wall and into the vacuum pump. And this batch is not going to have any restriction. So these are the trays I pulled out of the freeze dryer. There was a thousand uh, grams of uh, water in each one of these and all that is left is just the water deposits left behind. So we'll put another set of trays in and we're going to restrict the uh, vacuum line to see if we get less water in the oil. So this is my current setup with a standard Harvest Right hose. The only thing that's different is I have a T installed here with my Micron backing gauge. So I'm going to take this hose off and I'm going to replace it with this. And this is my 8th inch pipe thread reducer. And we're going to run uh, a load in my freeze dryer. Each tray will have a thousand grams of frozen ice and we'll see how much water comes in to the vacuum pump and I'm going to be putting brand new uh, black gold oil in this. So, on we go.
So this my reducer is now in place and so I'm going to go ahead and shut this door and we're going to do a new cycle. Now this is something of interest. This is my second batch of four 1,000 gram trays and as you can see I just barely passed the 24 uh, hour mark and this is with my restrictor in place. The same time uh, yesterday when I was doing the first set of trays I was already into the final drive by six hours. So by having this restrictor I am basically six hours behind my first batch that didn't have the restrictor and that kind of makes sense because I'm slowing down the CFMs going to the pump in the hopes to reduce the water uh, transfer and so I can see why this is lagging behind. I have the two samples of oil that has gone through my freeze dryer. This oil did not have any restrictions, this one did. So I'm going to add one drop of red food coloring to this oil and that drop of red food coloring is going to make its way down to the bottom and mix with the water so we can see how much it's going to be. And it will also aid us in separating the oil from the water. And the one that has the restriction, I'm going to put a single drop of green food coloring to do the same thing. That way it will be a lot easier to remove the water and then measure the water. So these are the two samples that went through my freeze dryer. Each load had four trays of 1,000 grams of ice. So all together each uh, batch had 4,000 grams of ice to freeze dry and we went to the same uh, basically the same mark on the final dry. So it took this jar and this jar, this jar on the left just was the regular harvest right hose. It took 24 hours to reach that mark where this jar that had the restrictor in with the hose took 32 hours. So the restricted hose actually took six more hours to freeze dry the same amount as this jar. So, and that only makes sense that with the, rest with the restricted passageway, it would take longer to freeze dry. So you can see here in the bottom of this jar, the amount of water that went through the regular harvest right hose. Uh, it's hard to ex exactly see how much this is. My guess would probably be maybe a tablespoon or so. This with the green food coloring is the oil that had the restriction. Now the funny thing about this, this oil here kind of grouped together a lot easier. This one over here I have all these little speckles all over the place so it's going to be a little bit harder to try to measure this amount of uh, water compared to this one but I think I have a way of doing so. So we're going we're gonna to measure as much as we can the amounts of water in each jar and see if the restrictor actually was beneficial in slowing down the CFM or the cubic feet per minute, slowing down the flow going from the freeze dryer over to the pump. So here's what remains. Our dye is still in the bottom of the jar and this is our oil which looks pretty good. So we're going to determine how much water is in the bottom of these jars. So this is the result of the restriction on the uh, return line to the vacuum pump. The red is without restriction, the green is with, is with restriction and you can see that the green it's a little bit less, but not by very much. So the question is, 
is it worth running the restriction and getting just a little bit less water back in the vacuum pump and adding an additional six hours of runtime on your machine? Well, I think the cost of runtime uh, supersedes the savings of having a restrictor on that. So it works, but it's not economically feasible to do this. So anyway, on to bigger and better things. So my conclusion on this little device, this little device was not an absolute failure. One thing it did do, it kept my oil much cleaner and prevented little particulates of food from going into the vacuum pump. And I don't know if you've noticed, if you've had oil from your freeze dryer vacuum pump sit for a while, it will actually start developing mold on top of the jar. That's because the little pieces of food that's mixed in with your oil starts to break down and mold. You're, you're basically making a culture to where mold and other creatures can start thriving and growing on it. But with this little device, it blocked all the impurity, so to speak, from going from my freeze dryer over to my vacuum pump. So this little filter thing right here was $45. Uh, the only problem with this, it was a good idea, but it also introduced nine more joints throughout here where a leak could develop. And so that's the little dodgy thing about adding this to a vacuum to a freeze dryer because it introduces more potential leaks. But it's probably something that Harvest Right should probably not totally dismiss because having an inline filter is beneficial in keeping your oil cleaner. It won't remove the water, but it'll keep the oil cleaner. The problem is, as long as water is under a high vacuum, it's going to remain in the gaseous state until it gets to the other side of the veins within the pump where the vacuum is not present and then that vapor can coalesce back down to a liquid and settle in the bottom of the reservoir of the vacuum pump. Just one more issue with this, if you ever decide to put a vacuum filter on your freeze dryer, wait until it's out of warranty. I'd hate to have you guys do anything that might uh, cause you cause Harvest Right not to warranty their uh, product because of an aftermarket addition that may have been put on their freeze dryer.